the time and space scales at which we make measurements have compressed. In order to study the very large, you have to study and understand the very small, and vice versa. <laughs> the students learn about this, but obviously they're not going to understand everything. Now we have to go down and start at the bottom. Popularizing science and, and teaching in a classroom are essentially the same thing. And by training, I'm a teacher. Whether I'm teaching a class in oceanography or I happen to ex be explaining some aspect of science, cosmology or medicine, in a sense, it's all the same. I could not believe it, going into a classroom and seeing the enthusiasm and the sort of kids just sort of bursting out of their skins because they just couldn't get enough and they're sucking it up like a sponge. Now that after retirement, I said, look, I think I want to go and work with young people. It's not easy to find a career, but you have to help them. But the, the goodwill is here. There's nothing more precious than young people. In a sense, science is nothing more than asking questions about the world around you. First of all, the excitement, and then try to uh, reason with the fundamentals. If you want to understand modern physics, you have to go back to Galileo, you have to go back to Newton, you have to go back to the classics. They have to be able to sort fact from fiction, from myth. Why does the universe exist? What what caused it to be what it was at the beginning and to thence become what it is now, who knows? Now, the why we're here thing, we're certainly still working on that, but we're getting a good idea of how we got here. And as you learn more and more, you realize this mystery, that there is magic.